Well, good Monday morning, everybody. Get up and stretch. It's a chilly one. We're going to need a little extra time out there, I think, to warm everything up and to get everything going. Take a look at some of the numbers that we have around the area. 11 still in Howell, 9 in Gross Eel, but we've got a lot of uh, in-betweens. One degree right now in Ann Arbor. It's one in Lapeer. Across M59 from Oakland County into McCormick, Combe County, four degrees from Pontiac over to Mount Clemens. And notice some of our wind chills sub zero. Right now, a seven below wind chill in Pontiac eight below in Mount Clemens. So we need to dress in layers today, seeing maybe a couple of flakes and flurries, but we're also tracking some significant snow in the seven day, at least a couple of chances right here next. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 4.30 starts now. John Skelton, the father of the three Skelton boys who disappeared years ago, speaks to Local 4 in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. Underdogs no more. The Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions for the first time in that franchise's history, Brandon. What an amazing game it was, and we look forward to seeing the crazy celebrations there, but it's bitter, not sweet, but it's bitter cold here. Yeah, single digits all across the metro area. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us on the day after Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. <laughs> How you Some feeling? Some may still be up from last night. <laughs> Carry it on. Yes, uh, big win certainly for the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll talk more about that in sports, uh, but also a tough loss for uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots as well. He's lost a few in the Super Bowl, but he's been there so many times. He's been to eight, yeah. and he's lost three. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Let's get you to our school closings. We did get uh, several inches of snow in some spots yesterday, Brandon. So we do have some school closings, more than 200. The full list, you can find it at clickondetroit.com. You can go there. You can also find it on our app and scrolling at the bottom of your screen. So let's get over to Brandon. How much snow did we get yesterday? Well, you know, it came in a couple of waves, but it was that sort of uh, late afternoon evening push that created some nasty visibility issues and several inches of snow. But I am a little surprised as early as it was sort of over with by nine o'clock or so last night, eight degrees right now. And now we have concern for ice and icy streets everywhere. The zero is the wind chill. West Southwest winds are just five. We have a lot of neighborhoods that are sub zero wind chills. You can see some clearing here, but also a little bit more cloud cover moving in and likely going to see a couple of flakes and flurries. And more than that, later tonight, we have snow coming in, but probably after six or seven PM. So icy on the streets early on and single digits to around 10 degrees by 8 AM, 19 degrees at noon, only partly sunny, 22 degrees the afternoon high with a uh, little snow coming tonight and we'll measure it. At least we'll try Rhonda coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. Police are searching for a gunman believed to be responsible for shooting and killing an Uber driver on Detroit's west side. It happened on Coyle Street near Franklin Greenfield. A witness told police that the Uber driver was there to pick her up. He was found shot multiple times. Police say that the suspect may be driving a dark colored pickup truck. A woman miraculously escapes danger after her car was struck by a train. Now this happened at the intersection of Cherry Hill and Newburgh over in Westland. Investigators are telling Local 4 that the woman's car became stuck right there on the tracks due to snow accumulation. Luckily, she was able to get out of her vehicle before the train hit it. The woman was uninjured and the train did not sustain any damage either. Meanwhile, it is a story that captivated our area and the nation. The disappearance of the three Skelton brothers who vanished while in their father's care. Well, now for the very first time in six years, John Skelton, the man responsible, is taking only, talking, I should say, only to our Sandra Ali. 
This is a story we have been working on for many months while taking a closer look at the Morency case. We reached out to John Skelton in prison to see if he was ready for a face to face interview. Then just last week, we sat down with him and talked for more than two hours. Keep in mind, since he's in a state prison, there aren't any cameras or recorders allowed inside. And in this case, we couldn't even bring in a notebook or a pen. I walked in the room. We made eye contact. He shook my hand and he started sobbing, which caught me off guard. John apologized for crying. He said he was so emotional because he couldn't believe he was having contact with a visitor. I was the first person to visit him here. I was sitting in the chair next to him. I didn't realize we would be in such close proximity. We were side by side the entire time. I asked him about the boys right off the bat. In tears, he said, I miss their voices. On their last night together, which John remembers as being the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, John says he made the boys their favorite meal, fried chicken and a cake to celebrate Andrew's birthday. John says he had already made arrangements with a group he calls the Underground Sanctuary to give the boys away. And on Thanksgiving night at 10, John says he watched as two women and a man who looked like he was in his 60s pulled up to the house in their light colored van to take Andrew, Alexander and Tanner away. John says he told the boys they were going to have a better life with a new family, a family who lived on an Amish farm in Ohio right along the Indiana border. He promised them their new family would buy them the farm boots they'd been asking for and let them ride on a tractor whenever they wanted. Breaking down in tears for the fourth time during our interview, John said he regrets giving his boys away. We hope you'll join us tonight at 10 p.m. for our Black Friday, the Missing Skelton Brothers special. You'll hear much more from John, his family in Jacksonville, and of course, the boy's mother, Tanya. I'm Sandra Ali. Back to you. And we have also launched a brand new podcast called Shattered Black Friday, and this is a project that we have been working on for months. The first two episodes are ready to download right now. One man in custody and another hospitalized after a shooting inside of a Clinton Township movie theater. Now, this happened on Sunday at the AMC Theater on Gratiot, just north of 15 Mile. Steve Yorgiola joins us from that theater with the very latest on what happened. Not everybody wanted to watch the football game last night. At least one family wanted to come here to see a movie. And a little girl in that family kind of stepped up as a hero in the story. Her reactions are what got first responders here so fast. The AMC star Grash at 21 was jammed with people when Lamar Harris arrived with his three children to see a movie. They heard a commotion. We were in line getting our tickets, bought to go to our movie, and a woman and a man runs out saying they want their money back because someone was shot. Police tell us two men had some sort of dispute inside the theater. One of them shot the other in the chest. They're scared. He should, we're all trying to figure out what happened. And I grabbed his phone and called 911. And once she did call 911 and hand me the phone, we realized at that time that we were the first persons to call because 911 dispatch hadn't got a call yet. The shooter is in custody being questioned by police. Marshala made her dad bring them back to the theater because she wanted to know about the victim's condition. He's hospitalized in stable condition. I guess she say, uh, I wonder if the guy's all right. I hope I saved his life when I called 911. And as you know now, you see you did do a great thing and you helped. And that's awesome. <laughs> that's my baby. Mm. One very proud dad and one amazing little girl. Again, the victim uh, in stable condition after that shooting. Police with the shooter in custody as they try to sort out what led to this violence. In Clinton Township, I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. Pretty impressive little girl, Steve. Thank you. Former Dr. Larry Nasser will be back in an Eaton County courtroom today and is expected to receive a third sentence. Michigan Attorney General's office says that 265 survivors have now reported abuse by the disgraced doctor. The latest sentencing hearing began last Wednesday and has included victim impact statements from more than 60 women who say that they were abused. You can watch that sentencing live on clickondetroit.com later today. Not all criminals are masterminds. A thief walks into an Oakland County bakery and goes straight for the cash register, but his getaway didn't exactly go as planned. We'll have more on that. Also, Brandon with our single digit Monday temperatures. Yeah, and the roads are icy as a result of the snow that has pushed through, and now we're tracking 
Another snowmaker, a little bit of an afternoon warm up. We hesitate. Not real warm, but several snow chances coming your way next. And making NFL history, Philadelphia pulling out all the stops to stop New England, the powerhouse, and snag that Lombardi trophy last night in Minneapolis for the first time ever for that franchise. We're back with highlights. Behind the Well, welcome back, everybody. Super Bowl 52 took center stage last night in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the Philadelphia Eagles pulled off a huge upset to defeat the New England Patriots. NBC News' Wendy Wolfwalk, she joins us from Minneapolis to give us a recap of the biggest night in pro sports. Hey, Rhonda, good morning to you. Wow, what a game. It was four full quarters of back and forth. And then the Philadelphia Eagles took control, and then they're taking home their first Vince Lombardi trophy. Outside U.S. Bank Stadium, bitter cold. I'm very excited. We are very excited for the Super Bowl. Inside, Patriots and Eagles fans. Let's go, Bears. Ah! Heating things up early. And with the lunch bulbs popping in Minnesota, here we go. On a the first quarter, offensive. The herd opening day, 25-yard attempt is good. Both teams marching down for early field goals. 26-yard attempt. Ryan Allen to put it down. The teams trading scores. Let's play action. Going for it all into the end zone, and it is caught. And in the second. Inside the 10, takes it to the end zone. The Eagles closing the half with a bit of trickery. And they're going to snap it, and it's Trey Burton who throws caught. Foles, touchdown. For a 10-point lead, followed by this. Let's go! Justin Timberlake taking the spotlight with an elaborate and energetic halftime performance, including a tribute to Minneapolis native Prince, and closing in the crowd. Here we go. A crowd that saw the second half start with a quick Patriots score. Gronkowski for the touchdown. The Eagles answering. Touchdown. The two teams battling back and forth. Tom Brady and the Patriots taking a late lead. Touchdown. But the Eagles soaring back in front of this circus catch, then sealing the game with the turnover. The ball is out. And Philadelphia has it. With my daughter, my wife, my family, my teammates, this city. We're very blessed. Super Bowl. I just love him. Certainly the sentimental favorite last night. You may remember the Eagles quarterback, Nick Foles, started the season on the bench. But last night, he was named Super Bowl MVP. Live in Minneapolis, I'm Wendy Woolfolk. Rhonda, back to you. He played an awesome game. Thank you, Wendy. And of course, there were all the commercials as well. Do you have some favorites? Let's get to Evra joining us now in the newsroom. It looks like we're working at a kickoff at 5 o'clock hour. Of course, we'll talk commercials yeah. coming up in the next couple hours. Yeah, there were a lot of good ones, a lot of very inspiring ones as well. So we'll break that all down during our 5 and 6 o'clock hour. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning to everybody at home. We're going to talk about the business of Bitcoin also coming up because you probably heard a ton about this digital currency lately. And this morning, our money expert, Rob Maloney, is explaining the craze surrounding it. Plus, we are battling the winter blues this week. Are you suffering from the winter blues? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'll show you the warning signs that your winter woes could be something more serious. Also, you might want to pay extra attention to your paycheck this month. We'll explain why when I join you for these stories and a whole lot more starting at 5 a.m. Go Eagles! <laughs> oh, don't tell that to all the Tom Brady fans out yeah. there. I'm pretty disappointed, certainly, with that Michigan connection. All right, Ever, I will see you here in a few. Speaking of Michigan connections, though, the defensive player for the Eagles that the helped stop up. that last two-minute drive. Uh, Strip the ball from him. Brandon like, Graham. He's from right here in Detroit. That's so. right. That was like a Michigan versus Michigan it type. It was. Of. It was. And it was interesting how Michigan won in the end there. 
<laughs> well, you know, it gives us all hope. hope as Detroit Lions fans that yes. you can break a streak. The Philadelphia Eagles never won a Super Bowl in their franchise history. We haven't either. Maybe, we're next. Maybe we're next. I think so. Getting that coach. new coach. Yeah. <laughs> it's not official intense. yet, but. <laughs> Last night, there were a lot of points given up, and we're getting New England's defensive coordinator. Yes, Matt Patricia. But he was pretty intense, pretty engaged. Oh, yeah. We like to see the looks of that on the sideline. Yes, we anyway. would, and we will soon. Yeah, and uh, so we're next. All right, next year. Yep. We're going to the Super Bowl. Much more important forecast next year, then, because it'll be parade route forecast for Detroit. Calling it, calling it right here, right now. All right, here's a look at some of the Super Bowl Sunday snow totals. I guess technically this would be late Saturday night through Sunday. The big winner in Sanilac County, 6.1 inches of snow. Wyandotte downriver, 5.5 total. Lapeer, 5 inches. Officially at Romulus, just under 5. And Farmington Hills saw 3. I think a lot of us saw that 3 to 5 inch range, maybe more of you on the lower end of that at three or four, but cold air has come in behind it. Skies cleared out about nine or 10 o'clock last night and look at Pontiac four degrees right now with a wind chill of seven below and it's not a real strong wind today that helps. However, cold air in place. The roads are icy from yesterday's snow. Crews did a good job, but we still have some slick spots, so we'll see clouds uh, mixing with some sun through the day, 10 degrees at 8 a.m., only 23 the afternoon high. And this evening, tracking more snow. Not a whole lot going on. Maybe a flurry or two during the day. And then the snowmaker to our west is heading just south of us. But it will be enough of a glancing blow to throw down some snow for us. You can see here on the model, getting through the day okay. And then this evening, here comes that snow maker by two or three tomorrow morning. It should race through here and probably a, at least an inch on the ground, maybe a couple, two, three, and then we've got another system uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. But in the meantime, the short term, one of our models in this one to three inch range again, eight o'clock tonight through about two o'clock Tuesday morning, and then we've got another one Tuesday night, Wednesday morning that could be another couple of inches. So we'll say maybe two to five inches total over the next uh, couple of evenings, staying pretty cool all week long. How about that? Winter like week ahead, Kim DeGiulio. Want to see how we're looking out there on the road? It's got to be a little rough going. Yes, it is. We did have all that snow yesterday and uh, just something that you want to be mindful of as you head out the door this morning. But uh, we can see right now, taking a look at the maps, that we do have some slowdowns and traffic volumes are still really light at this time. So that just means that people are driving safely out there because of that snow. We have one accident, though. If you travel through the Warren area, watch out for this. Over on westbound I-696, right at Hoover here, this accident is on the right shoulder. So just be careful there, but not causing much of a delay in this area, but that's the only accident we have right now. I'll continue to keep a close eye on these roads and bring you an updates coming up next. Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. A chaotic series of events at a Commerce Township bakery as a man tries to rob the store, fails and gets caught by an off duty sheriff's deputy all in the course of just 30 seconds. Here's our Sean Lay with the story. Mella Good Bakery here in Commerce, the ultimate small business. A thief runs in his plan so half-baked to steal this cash register. Ten feet away outside was a sheriff's deputy. He just booked, ran around the corner, grabbed the register and the tip jar, but the register was attached with a cord really tight, so it kind of jerked out of his hand. It dropped the, he ended up dropping that as well as the jar. And Melissa went right after him. The man stopped and walked back towards her. She didn't know standing right behind her was an Oakland County Sheriff's deputy. I kind of just looked at the officer and said, do you want to get <laughs> That deputy just happened to be parked right outside. The thief annoyed that he was caught within 30 seconds. And the guy walked past me, goes to hand me the jar with what he could get a hold of and said, really? And I'm like, Okay, I took the jar and he walks up to the officer, put his hands behind his back and stood there. I kind of felt like I left it hanging with him and he's still standing there with him and I walked back out and I said, look, I don't know why you did what you did, but honestly, I, I've got three children and it's, we're just 
the two of us making this happen. And I might not have much, but all you had to do is walk in and say, hey, you know, I'm down on my luck. I'd have done what I could. If I couldn't, I'd have found somebody to help you. And he just said, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, so you must be one of those that just wants to do it for the thrill. This guy's pockets also stuffed with items from the other shops up and down the street, so expect charges to be mounting against him. In Commerce Township, Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, thank you. This morning, U.S. Representative Brenda Lawrence is setting the record straight about a picture that appears to show her playing games on her phone during the President's State of the Union. We're going to share with you what she has to say about that ahead. But first, it's not often that surveillance video of a crime goes viral, but this is an exception to the rule. Find out why the video of this vandal is going viral next. On the next Live in the D, we are giving away amazing jewelry. We're talking diamonds, people, just in time for Valentine's Day. Plus how to beef up your dog's diet. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. Welcome back, everybody. Now to some stories that you may have missed, like this one, a vandal caught on tape in the act, viewed by millions over the weekend. Um, it had just as much to do with the crime itself as it did this. The host of a Seattle radio station took the video of this man struggling to break into this car and recorded this hilarious play-by-play -play voiceover <laughs> the entire time. Take a listen. Backs it up, slams it back into the window, slams it a second time. That's three, that's four. Las Vegas odds say he won't hit one more time. Again, he strikes the window, and now he comes down hard. Raining blows down upon the window. One, two, three, and this is just about tuckered him out. He places his right foot on top of the wall. Here he comes, and he falls off the roll. Oh, my God, somebody get some salami and cream cheese and rub it all over his face. He's unconscious, on the ground, with a mop. <laughs> well, believe it or not, somehow he got away. Police are still looking for the guy, which should be easy now that the video has been shared nearly 50,000 times and viewed by even more. U.S. Representative Brenda Lawrence is addressing the photo of her that has many people talking. Take a look at the photo. You can see uh, Congressman Lawrence. She appears to be playing a game on her phone. This was during the president's delivery of his State of the Union speech last week. In a statement released to Local 4 over the weekend, the Congresswoman settled the debate, revealing that she was playing a game called Gummy Drops. 4.55 is your time. Next at 5, local stories from Detroit, Clinton Township, and Westland. Also, supersized celebrations. We're live with the big game moments, the Super Bowl commercials, and all the excitement in Philadelphia. Jamie Edmonds is going to break it all down for us live. She's sticking around for us this morning. Meanwhile, a look at the roads, Kim. Wasn't such a good commute for us going in. No, the roads are snowy from all that snow we got yesterday. So definitely want to give yourself some extra time. We're pretty good right now. However, we've got a crash over on I-696. I'll tell you about it coming up at 5 o'clock. Brandon. All right, taking a look at what we have temperature-wise down to 6. The 5 a.m. number is in, but look upstream. We have single digits, sub-zero wind chills, bitter cold to start, and a snowy end. We'll talk about that a couple of times in this seven-day, but stay with us right here. Local 4 News today at 5 a.m. is coming your way. Don't go away. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News today at 5 starts now. Local Uber driver Ambush shot and killed after arriving to pick up a passenger. Plus, the final judgment. Former MSU Dr. Larry Nasser will be sentenced for the third time today. Brady under pressure, escapes the sack, launching one for the end zone. The final play of the Super Bowl, and Brady couldn't pull it off. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and their fans flying high this morning after winning their very first Super Bowl in their franchise history. Congratulations, congratulations to Philly. To yeah. Them. Yeah, and they deserve it, you know. Oh, they, heck yeah, they Patriots, do. They have enough rings. They <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, one for every finger. Yeah. Finger on the hand. Yeah, so it was an exciting oh. game. We'll, of course, be talking a lot about it in addition to the Super Bowl commercials. And, and the halftime performance. Yeah, so much to talk about on this Monday morning, including the snow we had yesterday. Speaking of snow, that has led to more than 200 school closings at that. We're going to have those on your screen throughout the newscast or also on ClickOnDetroit.com this morning. Meanwhile, you do have to get up and out of the door this morning. The heavy snow done falling, Brandon? Yeah, it is. It's still very icy out there and the cool air came right in behind that snow yesterday. So look at these current numbers. Nine below right now in Port Huron. That's not the wind chill. These are actual temp temperatures. Six at Metro, five in Pontiac, seven in Ann Arbor. Howell is at 11. Factor in a breeze in many, but not all areas. Sub-zero. Wind chill is seven below in Mount Clemens, six below at Metro. Doing all right in Howell, still at 11, but it's icy and chilly everywhere, right around 10 degrees at 8 a.m. Feeling sub-zero or at least close with 19 at noon, a mix of clouds and sun, a couple of flakes and flurries, but 23 degrees and mostly dry other than a few flurries. We are tracking some Monday evening snow. You can see it out to the west. We'll do that with you coming up right now. Here's Kim and your four live traffic good Monday morning. Good Monday morning to you as well, Brandon. Good morning, everyone. Hope uh, you are waking up well. I just want to take a look at the big picture here. You can see we've got some slowdowns over on I-96. Uh, that is not because of an accident or anything like that. That's just because the roads are snowy, people driving cautiously. Uh, just one accident to let you know about over on I-696. This one affecting the westbound lanes right at Hoover here. Your right shoulder is blocked. Be careful in that area. And then also, we got to talk about some construction over on the Davison. I'll tell you all about that coming up in my next report at 5. 14. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. We do want to get you to a story, get you updated. It was breaking news last night after the Super Bowl. We're talking about an Uber driver that was shot and killed. Local force Coco McAvoy is live for us this morning at police headquarters here in Detroit with more on how this all went down. Good morning, Coco. Good morning, Everett and Rhonda. The details are very limited at this time. All we do know is that a man was shot and killed and he was an Uber driver, but police really need your help solving this crime. This was the crime scene on Detroit's west side after a man was shot multiple times. The shooting happened here in the 15,000 block of Coyle Street at around 740 last night. When officers arrived to the area, they found a man dead with several gunshot wounds. A witness told police the man was an Uber driver and he was there to get her something to eat. Officers are still working on confirming a number of details in this case. Police looked inside of the man's car for clues about who killed him and are hoping to lock down a motive and a killer. And police don't have much information at this time about a suspect. They do know the suspect was driving a dark colored pickup truck. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Detroit Police Department. Reporting live this morning, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. Coco, thank you. Today, former Michigan State and USA Gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser is going to be back in that Eaton County courtroom. He is likely to be sentenced for the third and final time today. More than 250 women and girls have reported abuse to law enforcement. Nasser's latest sentencing hearing that began last Wednesday and has included victim impact statements from more than 60 women who say that they were all abused. You can watch the continuation of that hearing this morning. We will have it live streaming on our website at clickondetroit.com. Meanwhile, Michigan State University faculty are moving ahead with a motion to take a vote of no confidence in the school's board of trustees. The motion is in response to the board's decision to hire former Michigan Governor John Engler as the interim president of the university. Faculty members say that the board rushed to appoint Engler and criticize his lack of academic experience in the vote of no confidence passes. If it does, faculty would call on the board of trustees to step down immediately. Well, 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 what do we have here? It was a close call during the Philadelphia Eagles celebration. A group of fans, as you just saw there, were on the awning at the Ritz-Carlton when it came crashing down. And believe it or not, there were no serious injuries. M most of the celebrations, there were peaceful. And there's no word yet on exactly how much damage was caused. And police have yet to announce if any arrests were made. But the entire city of Philadelphia elated this morning, to say the least, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And it gives us all hope that maybe the Detroit Lions could win the Super Bowl one day. Right. If the Eagles can win their first Super Bowl, why, why not us? The Lions, <laughs> my <laughs> guess, of course, is that they're still partying in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> this game was absolutely amazing. I have some highlights for you. First of all, Nick Foles was responsible for four touchdowns. As soon as we get into those highlights, I will show them. He had one receiving, three throwing. With 34 seconds to play, there was a trick play, and he winds up as a wing back. Here we go. Look, he's tricking everyone out. He's not going to go under center. Instead, he's going to have the tight end throw him a pass. And he caught it. 22-12 Eagles at halftime. Patriots come back in the fourth. Tom Brady to Rob Gronkowski. Patriots take the one-point lead. Nine minutes to go, but the Eagles stay aggressive. Foles firing to Zach Ertz for the score. The play was reviewed. NFL says it's a catch. Eagles lead 38-33. With two to go now, Philly's defense coming up big. Brandon Graham swats the ball out of Brady's hands. Eagles recover. The former Wolverine responsible for the only turnover of the game. Eagles hold on for the 41-33 win. Everything that we've been through this season uh, to get to this point, a lot of people, you know, counted us out, but that locker room believed, believed in each other, believed in me. You could see it throughout the course of this game. No matter what happened, we just kept sticking together, kept leaning on each other. We have an amazing coaching staff, amazing personnel staff. I mean, just to be in this moment, I mean, unbelievable. Today we had our opportunities. Um, Never really got control of the game. Never really played on our terms. And, uh, you know, just didn't make enough plays when we needed to. And everyone said, you know, no one feels bad for Tom Brady. He has won before, and he was asked, and he said he plans to return next season, so he's still on the hunt for Super Bowl number six. Meanwhile, this was the Eagles' first Super Bowl championship, and like I said, I think they're still partying in Philadelphia. Oh, for sure they are, yeah. and that head coach made some pretty gutsy calls in that game That's for Philadelphia. How you beat the Patriots yeah. you have to go for 60 minutes. You can't sit yeah. back like yeah. the Falcons did last year. Uh-huh, and go on fourth down and just go for it with yeah. some crazy trick play. Yeah, it was awesome. awesome. Yeah, it was good a very for that game. Yeah, we do want to remind you to stick with us throughout the morning. We're going to have continuing coverage of all elements regarding Super Bowl 52. Yes, including that halftime performance with Justin Timberlake and also share several mixed reviews from folks about his performance as well as for some of the Super Bowl commercials. We will tell you why Chrysler's Dodge Ram pickup ad uh, that aired on Sunday night. It's taking some heat for what was used as the soundtrack or voiceover, um, although some people were very highly in support of it. So all that and more still coming your way this morning. Stick around for that. Also ahead this morning, he is the person with all of the answers in connection with the disappearance of his three sons several years ago in an interview with John Skelton face to face from prison. Yeah, he sits down with our very own Sandra Ali, sobbing and talking about his biggest regret. We will tell you all about their conversation in a story you'll see only here on Local 4. And stuck in the snow on the tracks with a train headed right at her. Mm. Next, a very close call for this driver. And happy birthday for celebrating today. It is February 5th. A happy birthday going out to Zaire Rice is turning 7 today. Tyson Watson is 15. Carney Parker, happy 21st birthday to you. Amber Underwood is turning 24 today. Chase Osborne turning 25 today. And C. Alexander going uh, turning 38. Also celebrating today, Andrea Gibbs turns 47. Mike Kornatowski, happy 50th birthday to you. Dolores Kimbrough turns 51 today. Delphine Jones, happy 51st birthday to you. Nishia King, 56 today. And happy birthday to Melanie James, turning 58. David Lackey is turning 59 today. Jeffrey Thornton, happy 59th birthday as well. Jan Ornstein turning 65. Will Lee Smith is 73. Happy birthday to you. Edna Neely is turning 80 today. And happy birthday going out to Gay, Gay Doyle. Also celebrating today, happy birthday to Nick Esper, Vernon Smith, and happy anniversary to Bobby and Teresa Harmon. 18 years together. Congratulations. Diamonds. Welcome back, everybody. New developments surrounding a deadly Amtrak train crash in South Carolina. We've learned that two Amtrak employees were killed and more than 100 people were taken to the hospital after that crash on Sunday morning. The train was traveling from New York to Florida. According to the NTSB, the train should have continued straight down the tracks, but the rail 
the rail switch had been manually set to divert the train onto the side track where a freight train was parked. An investigation continues into how this could have happened. Back here at home now, a female driver is okay after her car was hit by a train near the intersection of Cherry Hill and Newburgh in Westland. Investigators telling us that the woman's car got stuck on the tracks because of uh, snow accumulation. Luckily, she was able to get out before the train hit it. That woman was not hurt, and believe it or not, the train was not damaged either. It is 6 6:13. It is 5:13. Oh, on yeah, go back Monday to sleep. Morning. Yeah, Get one more hour of sleep. <laughs> Let's turn things over to Brandon and Kim. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good Monday morning. How are you doing? Did you stay up late, watch the game? I did. Yep, I watched the whole thing. My kids watched it, which is pretty rare, but mm -hmm. uh, an overwhelming need to root against New England. Yeah. That was their motivation. Oh, your kids? Yeah. Oh, that was my motivation. And I'm, you know, a Michigan lover, but I'm so over Tom Brady winning everything. Uh, well. <laughs> Seriously. We'll let him know. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you know, you're, you're certainly not alone. I think everybody's feeling that. He played awesome, too. I mean, 500 yards passing. They were in it the entire way. Uh, here's a look at the numbers here. Let's get it back to local. I don't think they can hear us in Philly or New England this morning, but to, maybe online. Six degrees in our metro zone, five in Lapeer. Monroe's at nine. The warm spot Howell up north and west of Detroit, 11 degrees. Wind chills are a little closer to zero and sub-zero in many neighborhoods right now. The winds through the morning and afternoon will be picking up five to 15 miles an hour, gusting over 20, especially from noon to about four o'clock. So 19 at noon and then 23 the high. Only partly sunny skies and a few flakes and flurries, but wind chilly conditions throughout the day. We are tracking more snow for later tonight. You see a couple of flurries as uh, these winds out of the west just promoting a little extra cloud cover and some low clouds that could, yeah, still squeeze out a, a few flakes and flurries during the morning. This system coming your way later on tonight. So for this evening, mainly between 7 p.m. and 2 a.m. time frame, we're looking at snow showers that could throw down a couple of inches. And it looks like the track mainly is for areas along and south of M59. So the southern two thirds of our area later tonight, here comes that snow. Doesn't mean uh, north of that mark you won't get snow, but accumulating snow is most likely south of M59 for a couple of inches. Models are kind of all over the place, one to two or three inches, and there'll be another quick little snowmaker late Tuesday, early Wednesday. So we have a couple of chances to just increase our snowpack a little bit. Uh, one of our models here keeps us into this one to three inch range. I think a lot of us probably see something like two inches on the ground as you head out and about Tuesday morning. Most of tomorrow is dry and then overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, another little uh, clipper, mostly to our south, but a little branch of that does move up in here early Wednesday for some snow showers. Notice teens and 20s all week staying on the cool side warms up a little bit this weekend Kim which makes weekend wet weather a little tricky Saturday night into Sunday looks like a little mix to some snow well at least we are good at it by now it's uh it's been around for a while now, so I just do want to take a look at what's going on uh, to watch out for as you head out the door right now. This is an accident over on westbound I-696 right at Hoover. Uh, it's blocking your right shoulder. You can see the flashing lights here. Cars traveling cautiously through this area. We're not seeing major delays, but just something to be mindful of if you do travel through the Warren area. Area. Also, I want to take a look at some construction over on the Davison. This is the east and westbound lanes between Lidwood and the Lodge here. Expect one lane block. This starts up at 9 a.m., wrapping up at 3 p.m., and this is something you want to keep in mind during that same time for the rest of the week. And then I also want to keep you updated on that I-696 accident, so I'll bring you an update on what's going on there coming up in my next report at 524. Back to you. Okay, Kim, thank you. A man is continuing to recover this morning after he was shot inside of the AMC Star Gratiot Movie Theater in Clinton Township. Investigators say that the shooting happened after an alleged dispute. The Harris family, a father and daughter, says that they were in line to purchase tickets when a man and a woman ran past them saying that someone had been shot. That's when that daughter immediately grabbed her dad's phone to call 911.
they're scared. He sh we're to all trying to figure out what happened. And I grabbed his phone and called 911. Or did she say, uh, I wonder if the guy's all right. I hope I saved his life when I called 911. And as you know now, you see you did do a great thing and you helped. And that's awesome. <laughs> that's my baby. Mm. Pretty proud Papa there, right? The lead shooter, by the way, remained at the scene and was taken into custody. What led up to this alleged dispute is still under investigation. Several groups are pushing for measures to institute no reason absentee voting and same day registration here in the state of Michigan. The Detroit News reports the League of Women Voters, the ACLU and the NAACP have filed petitions with the state last month and are awaiting approval to proceed. If eventually approved, the measure would extend deadlines to register to vote and allow registration in person at any time with proof of residency. The current law requires voters to be registered 30 days before an election. It is 519 and we wanted to share some photos from our winners from our <laughs> Monster Jam Trivia Contest. Uh, so take a look at your screen. The BD family sent us a couple of photos here of cool. themselves enjoying uh, a night out. It was a father and son uh, evening out for the Million family as well. They had a fun time and the Williams family had a great time as well sharing some photos with us. And uh, we should let you know. Yeah, congratulations to everybody that had a chance to experience it on us. The Monster Jam, of course, was at Ford Field roaring all weekend long. Very fun. Great times for the families. Yeah. 519 is your time here on your Monday morning and ahead this morning. It's a classic battle that's been fought for thousands of years. It's winter versus spring in what's known as the Fire Festival. Also, you're going to want to pay attention to your paycheck. We'll tell you why it might be different coming up. Well, good Monday morning, everybody. As you get up, uh, getting ready to get out there and shovel. Well, maybe you took care of that yesterday. It is six degrees with a wind chill of six below and uh, cloudy skies, a couple of flakes and flurries and a few breaks. We'll see a couple of breaks throughout the day today, but staying on the chilly side, uh, lower to upper teens through the morning and 23 the afternoon high with this evening a little more snow coming your way, but we should get through the evening commute dry, Kim. All right, well, that's good news, but here's a look at your morning commute. We did have an accident in this area, but that has just cleared. This is over on westbound I-696 right at Hoover. Uh, still got to be careful, though, because those roads are really slick from that snow we had yesterday. All right, Kim, thank you. You may want to pay extra attention to your paycheck this month. The new tax law President Trump signed in December may change it. The exact timing depends on when your employer implements the new tax with holding tables and how often you get paid. So it's estimated that about 90% of workers will see an increase in their take home pay due to the new tax overhaul. The IRS wants employers to begin using the new 2018 withholding tables by February 15th. It is 524 on your Monday morning and coming up next right here on Local 4 News today. Local stories for you from all across Metro Detroit. Yes, including this story, a better way to have a baby. The one thing that could reduce the need for a C-section. We'll take a closer look at that. Plus, Judgment Day and what we expect to happen today as Larry Nasser gets ready to learn his fate for a third time. We're back after this. After the Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. Our top story this half hour, two of the most notorious men in Michigan back in the news. Ex-USA gymnastics doctor and Michigan State University Dr. Larry Nasser will be sentenced this morning. And a local board exclusive, one-on-one -on -one with John Skelton. He is the father of those missing brothers from Morenci. And was that supposed to happen ahead the mistake that could cost $5 million? Welcome to Monday, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us here on the day after the Super Bowl. Yeah. I didn't have the day off this morning. Uh, it's a student. Well, I was going to say, yes, because all the snow we had yesterday, we have a couple hundred school closings this morning. So some kids getting to sleep in if they stayed up late. But for everybody else has to get up and out of the door the day after the Super Bowl. Let's get over to Brandon and talk about the <laughs> forecast. It's going to be a struggle for a lot of reasons, including these cold temperatures. Yeah, the storm did verify three to six inches. It was just sort of a a weird process with Saturday night, early Sunday, 
it didn't look like it was going to be a whole lot and then things intensified at times on Sunday. So we saw that three to six inches. A lot of you three or four through the day yesterday and right now the cold air is on top of us. So some icy spots, no doubt about it. Six degrees at Metro with a wind chill of six below. It's five in Pontiac with a wind chill of four below. Adrian, it's 10 and the wind chill is 10. So very light winds there, but very cool stuff all day. 10 degrees at 8 a.m. Again, very slick on the streets. The highways and byways are in decent shape, but still again, some icy spots possible near 20 degrees at noon, but not feeling much like it. Winds are midday through the afternoon, picking up a little bit low 20s again, feeling like single digits to low teens and a couple of flakes and flurries, just not really seeing anything problematic during the daylight hours tonight. A different story. Snow returns, and we'll have more on that, Kim. Coming up, how we looking? Well, we're not bad out there, but you definitely want to give yourself extra time this morning as you head out the door because it is a little slick out there. We've got one problem to watch out for over on I-94. This is affecting the eastbound lanes right at Belleville Road here, so just keep this in mind. It's on the left shoulder. Not seeing much of a delay, uh, but again, be cautious while traveling over um, that way over on I-94. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. He's already facing life in prison, but today Larry Nasser will be sentenced again. The former Michigan State and USA Gymnastics doctor will face a judge for what we believe will be the final time. Local force Coco McAvoy joining us live now with more on this. And Coco, what do we expect to happen in court today? Good morning, Everett and Rhonda. So all of the victims have spoken, so we expect Larry Nasser to be sentenced today. But before that happens, we have to hear from the prosecutor and the defense attorney and possibly Larry Nasser himself. Larry Nasser could be sentenced today for his crimes against young gymnasts in Eden County. It's the second round of sentencing for Nasser, who has watched dozens of victims come forward to share their stories of sexual abuse. Last Friday, one father, Randy Margraves, did what a lot of parents wanted to do when they heard about the trauma their daughters suffered. Later that day, he said his emotions got the best of him. I'm embarrassed. I didn't, I'm not here to upstage my daughters. The judge decided Margraves wouldn't face any charges. I delivered unintentionally my three daughters to a demon who had his own twisted and sick agenda for his own demented desires. Now I have to live with the fact that I failed to protect my daughters. While Nasser's case could wrap up this afternoon, more action will be taken in Washington, D.C. following this pivotal and disturbing case. And of course, we do expect Larry Nasser's sentencing to wrap up this morning. We'll have full coverage on air and online at clickondetroit.com. Reporting live this morning, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. All right, Coco, thank you for the update there. You can, of course, watch the sentencing live today on our website. Just go to clickondetroit.com for that. It is 532 now, and nearly 2,000 DTE Energy customers were left in the dark just as the Super Bowl was kicking off. Yes, more than 1,500 customers lost power in Oakland County just after 6 p.m. The outage mostly impacted homes in West Bloomfield and Farmington Hills between Maple Road and 14 Mile. Businesses were also affected, including a pizzeria on one of the busiest nice of the year for them. It was a tough night. It was it we've been like it's been like one of the busiest nights we've ever had with no computers, like a ton of delivery. We've just been sort of like going at it blind. We have a little generator that is going and we have a coal fired oven and we don't stop unless you know unless nature really stops us. Well, good for them for figuring it out. The customers were able to see the fantastic end of the game as power was restored just after 9 p.m. There was also a big oops during the broadcast uh, that you may have seen and wondered what happened. Halfway through the second quarter, it's Philadelphia 15. New England search in Super Bowl 52.
Well, there you saw an awkward blackout during a commercial break. This was in the middle of the second quarter, and then many were surprised to see such a mistake during the big game. NBC saying that there was an error uh, due to a malfunction involving a commercial, a pretty costly mistake, as ads. Sunday night went for $5 million each, but uh, apparently there was no game time missed. Just no, no game time and actually there. no commercial time either. It yeah. was some kind of commitment, co uh, or I should say equipment failure, but uh, thankfully... All the commercials still aired as they should. Yeah, and as far as the game is concerned, though, fans definitely got their money. So this was an epic game from start to finish. Yes, it was. A lot of highlights, a lot of lowlights. It was Record great. Record breaking. Yeah. Yes. You will. It was really, really exciting. I loved watching it. And if you said before that this Super Bowl would turn into a shootout, you would definitely say Tom Brady and the Patriots would win it, right? No, it was Nick Foles, the Eagles backup, who outdueled the great Tom Brady. First quarter, 3-3 game. Foles is going to air this out. Throwing all the way to the end zone, 34 yards. Alshon Jeffrey comes down with it. Touchdown, Eagles. How about this trick play on fourth down? Nick Foles not under center. Instead, lining up as wing back. Tight end Trey Burton throws it to a wide open Foles for the score. He's got hands. Eagles led it 22-12 at the half. Foles would find Corey Clement early in the second half. Then late, they needed points, and he finds Zach Ertz from 11 yards out. Eagles win it with their backup quarterback, 41-33. Postgame, Foles was named Super Bowl MVP when not long ago he thought his career was over. A couple years ago, there's a time where I was thinking about hanging up the cleats and, you know, I think as people, you know, we deal with struggles and that was, you know, a moment in my life where, you know, I thought about it and, you know, I prayed about it and, you know, I'm grateful that I made the decision to come back here and play. All right, we said this was record breaking. Well, Foles was the MVP, but get this in the loss. Tom Brady broke a Super Bowl passing record for 505 passing yards. And the Eagles and the Patriots combined for the most net offensive yards in history, more than 1,100 yards. Lots of offense. Yes, it was. I was going to say defense, you oh. know? There wasn't very many, like, three and outs. It no. was constant no. <laughs> scoring and first downs. And we have Jim Schwartz, the defensive coordinator mm -hmm. over there. And yeah. Of course, Matt Patricia, Patricia. The coming here. Coming here. I we think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> time to leave. <laughs> All right. Come on over. We're ready. But I was um, feeling like Nick Foles kind of took a page out of Tom Brady's book when he won his very first Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. He was a backup quarterback, too. Absolutely. And yeah. just so composed. You thought maybe he'd come out a little shaky and throw a few no. crazy balls. He and was Doug good Peterson from start to finish. Uh, uh, trusted in him. Yeah. He called the plays. Heck yeah. all that's, I, good for him. Absolutely. <laughs> and look at Jamie Edmonds up early with us this morning. Like it's good to this have morning you. Morning crew. Thanks yeah. for having me. We might have to make you a regular part. <laughs> okay. I'll eat some more alarm clock. <laughs> and we'll get you lots of coffee. Okay. Yeah. All right, <laughs> that's the way to get through. Thanks, good to Jamie. see you. It is 537, and we should let you know an estimated 13.9 million people are expected to call in sick today. Uh, yes, that's less than the 16 million who were sick last mm. year during the Super Bowl. However, experts say that this year's flu epidemic is a legit problem and yeah. could cause a number of people to miss work today. A survey conducted by the Workforce Institute showed 25% felt that the day after the big game should be a national holiday. I could definitely see that. You know, get up and go to work. It's going to be a rough one, but <laughs> we're all in this together. And you always want to talk about the game with your friends, your coworkers. Exactly. And that kind of thing. So you don't want to miss that water so cooler talk, absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> it is 537, everybody, and a thief's plan to steal a cash register was half baked, I guess you could say. A sheriff's deputy sitting just feet away from the crime when it happened. This was at Mel A Good Bakery on Union Lake Road in Commerce Township. The man rushed right past the cookies and cakes and went straight to the cash register. And he just booked, ran around the corner, grabbed the register and the tip jar, but the register was attached with a cord really tight, so it kind of jerked out of his hand. It dropped the, he ended up dropping that as well as the jar, and I just decided to run towards him. So stupid. What an idiot. The man escaped, unfortunately, but stopped after he realized the deputy just happened to be parked outside. He was arrested within 30 seconds of taking that register. You know what? I think there's a word for out oh, karma. That's what it's called. Yeah, tell me about it. 538 is your time. I had this morning face to face with John Skelton. Yeah, the father of the missing brothers from Renzi talks to their very own Sandra Ali. I walked in the room. We made eye contact. He shook my hand and he started sobbing. 
which caught me off guard. It's an exclusive Local 4 interview from behind prison walls. And a chilling attack caught on tape involving hot water. This past year. Welcome back everyone. A new video captures an enraged employee throwing boiling hot water in her manager's face. This was down in Florida. Witnesses say that it happened after the manager confronted the woman and accused her of stealing on the job. Well, the manager suffered third degree burns. That woman was later arrested, arrested at her home, and she's now charged with assault. Thankfully, the manager is expected to make a full recovery, a slow one at that. And we continue to celebrate Black History Month here on Local 4. And today we recognize Henry Ford Health Systems, Dr. Lisa Newman, a surgical oncologist. Her research has a focus on triple negative breast cancer in African-American women. Global outreach is a big part of her research. In Ghana, Africa, she treats women with breast cancer and collects information to bring back here. Dr. Newman hopes to be able to improve treatment options for all women with triple negative breast cancer. Very important work. It is at 543 and crowds gathered in the English village of Marston over the weekend to watch winter battle spring. Yes, they do. The Imbolic Fire. This is a festival which dates back thousands of years, celebrates the end of the dark winter days and the return of the light. The highlight of the festival was a clash between two giants, an icy Jack Frost representing winter and a leaf covered green man symbolizing spring. A fiery battle was won by spring. Embolic is celebrated midway between the winter solstice and the spring Am I equinox. I'm the one that that looked kind of scary. <laughs> like, look like some like satanic ritual. <laughs> you see that with all the fire and all that stuff, but hey, you got to do something to welcome spring, right? Right. You want it. We're just trying to get through it, Brandon. Ooh. You know who goes to that, I think, normally? Dana. I think she's part of that. She's one of our uh, uh, directors here. She has a baby now, so probably not going these-a-days, but uh, I have another friend who goes to that festival. Looks like a lot of fun. The battle of fire and ice. Boy, you, you felt that all day yesterday, no matter where you were. Here's a look at Super Bowl Sunday snow totals. Oh, I want to hear this. <laughs> we all right? Uh, temperatures, or I'm sorry, snow totals over a half a foot in Flint. White Lake, almost six inches. Port Huron, five and a half. A lot of three and a half to four and a half totals like Ann Arbor, 4.6. Shelby Township, 4.2 in Macomb County. We have a six degree temp outside right now with a southwest wind at seven. Feels like six below. So we have to dress for that. We have to get our kids dressed for that in layers today. Boots, no doubt about it. And a little extra time on the roads with slick streets, not only side streets, but some of the highways and byways are also a little on the slippery side to start the day. 10 degrees at 8 a.m., 19 at noon with a high of 23, staying mostly cloudy most of the day. A couple of flakes and flurries coming. The winds out of the west, west, southwest, picking up a little bit through the day. So those low 20s won't even feel much like low 20s. And a couple of uh, uh, very weak systems coming our way over the next three or four days. One of them this evening, sometime after 7 p.m., so after the evening drive, snow showers coming in. Looks like uh, one to three inches with a lot of uh, a lot of us on that one to two inch side, but a, a random three inch or so possibility. Here's a look at the computer model. Again, nothing really happening during the day, but uh, once we get past the evening drive and dinner time that snow starts moving in first thing tomorrow morning it will be gone but still cool teens to start Tuesday and 28 degrees tomorrow afternoon with more fresh snowpack especially the southern two thirds or south of M 59 tomorrow and that's again tonight overnight mainly Wednesday a very similar situation this one could come a little bit later meaning Wednesday maybe during the morning drive hopefully not but we'll keep an eye on that a couple of snowmakers coming our way and then drier toward the end of the work and school week
Let's send it to Kim now in for live traffic looking down at some of those slippery streets. Yes, it is going to be a tricky commute this morning. We did have that snow yesterday, especially your surface streets. It's probably still snow covered in some areas, so be mindful of that. But here's what's going on on the freeways. This is northbound I-75, the ramp to westbound I-96. We've got this accident here. Uh, that car is blocking the left shoulder. As you can see, not causing much of a delay, though. You want to be careful while traveling this way. And then we've got another accident over on I-94. This one affecting the eastbound lanes right at Belleville Road. Uh, left shoulder blocked here, so you you definitely want to keep that in mind as well, but no delays in that area as well. So no matter what you do, you want to give yourself some extra time, but it doesn't seem like there's any major delays you need to worry about as you head out the door this morning. Guys? Police say three missing boys may be in extreme danger. A frantic search in the town of Morency. The search for three missing boys growing more desperate with every passing hour. We know their dad lied to police. The brothers are ages five, seven, and nine. They're from the town of Morency, Michigan. An all-out search near the Michigan-Ohio border. The FBI now getting involved. This community is beginning to fear the worst. Still no sign tonight of Andrew, Alexander, and Tanner Skelton. It is a story that really captivated our area, the entire country at that. The disappearance of the three brothers who vanished while they were in their father's care. Yes, yeah, so and now for the first time in six years, John Skelton, the man responsible, is talking only to our Sandra Ali. This is a story we have been working on for many months while taking a closer look at the Morency case. We reached out to John Skelton in prison to see if he was ready for a face to face interview. Then just last week, we sat down with him and talked for more than two hours. Keep in mind, since he's in a state prison, there aren't any cameras or recorders allowed inside. And in this case, we couldn't even bring in a notebook or a pen. I walked in the room. We made eye contact. He shook my hand and he started sobbing, which caught me off guard. John apologized for crying. He said he was so emotional because he couldn't believe he was having contact with a visitor. I was the first person to visit him here. I was sitting in the chair next to him. I didn't realize we would be in such close proximity. We were side by side the entire time. I asked him about the boys right off the bat. In tears, he said, I miss their voices. On their last night together, which John remembers as being the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, John says he made the boys their favorite meal, fried chicken and a cake to celebrate Andrew's birthday. John says he had already made arrangements with a group he calls the Underground Sanctuary to give the boys away. And on Thanksgiving night at 10, John says he watched as two women and a man who looked like he was in his 60s pulled up to the house in their light colored van to take Andrew, Alexander and Tanner away. John says he told the boys they were going to have a better life with a new family, a family who lived on an Amish farm in Ohio, right along the Indiana border. He promised them their new family would buy them the farm boots they'd been asking for and let them ride on a tractor whenever they wanted. Breaking down in tears for the fourth time during our interview, John said he regrets giving his boys away. We hope you'll join us tonight at 10 p.m. for our Black Friday, the Missing Skelton Brothers special. You'll hear much more from John, his family in Jacksonville, and of course, the boy's mother, Tanya. I'm Sandra Ali. Back to you. His reaction uh, took her off guard, as she mentioned, not typically what you would expect. So mm -hmm. we'll definitely be tuning in for that. We also want to let you know we've launched a brand new podcast. It's called Shattered Black Friday. And this is a project that we have been working on for months here at Local 4. The first two of 10 episodes is ready to download right now. All right. Time now is 551. Wine lovers rejoice. I had this morning a new health benefit to drinking wine. It turns out that it can actually help clean your brain will explain what that's all about coming up. Keep it here. On the next Live in the D, we are giving away amazing jewelry. We're talking diamonds, people, just in time for Valentine's Day. Plus how to beef up your dog's diet. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. No. Good Monday morning. Welcome back to Local 4 News today. Yeah, it was mild at times over the weekend, near 30, but now it's six with a wind chill of six below. Eventually, teens to near 20 at noon with clouds and uh, a few flakes and flurries. Low 20s for highs, but feeling colder, and Kim will have more snow coming in tonight. 
Ooh, that could be, make for a tricky evening commute, but right now your morning commute's not too bad. It is slick out there, so be careful, but watch out for this accident over on northbound I-75, that ramp to westbound I-96. You can see it's blocking the left shoulder. Use caution while approaching this area. All right, Kim, thank you. In good health, experts are saying inducing labor intentionally early in pregnancy could have a major health benefit. The study finds inducing labor at 39 weeks of pregnancy may reduce the need for a C-section. Researchers tracked more than 6,000 first-time healthy moms. The induced women were significantly less likely to require a C-section. Current guidelines recommend against inducing for no medical reason, but it has become more common in recent years. Well, enjoying a glass of wine or two a day could actually help clean your brain. Researchers studied the brains of mice that had consumed low to moderate amounts of alcohol for 30 days. The mice had less inflammation and fewer toxins, including those linked to Alzheimer's disease than those not exposed to alcohol. But as always, we should remind you moderation is key. Well, here is an interesting combination in San Diego. Uh, a marijuana dispenser and a small girl from an area Girl Scout troop decided to team up. Yes, uh, Urban Leaf posted this photo showing the Girl Scout in front of the store with the Girl Scout cookies. She also had her face covered with a pair of cookie shades. The store posted on social media encouraging customers to visit and bring any friends that wanted to tag along. I'm a little confused. What's the connection there? <laughs> there shouldn't be a connection at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's move along. It's yes. 57, everybody. Coming up all new at <laughs> 6 o'clock. Local stories for you from Clinton Township, Converse Township, and Detroit. Plus, battling winter blues, the warning signs that your winter woes could be something more serious. And commercial controversy, a Super Bowl drawing backlash, a Super Bowl ad drawing backlash this morning. We'll show you why. Let you be the judge when we come back. Keep it here. The votes are live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Killed while picking up a passenger, an Uber driver ambushed in Detroit, and now the search for the gunman. Plus, justice will be served. Today, Larry Nasser will be sentenced for the second time in two weeks for abusing young girls and women. But as the chapter closes, the fallout from his crimes continue. And Super Bowl champs doing gutsy plays like that got the Philadelphia Eagles to capture their first Super Bowl in team history. And to top it off, they beat Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. I think a lot of people have a hard time doing. That was oh, a big feat. That was you know a very I mean? big feat, and they were very courageous in how they pulled it off. They did Absolutely. not hold back. Very well executed for Philadelphia. Congrats to them, and good morning, everybody. The morning after Super Bowl Sunday, always a little tough for some folks to get going if you had a late night. Absolutely, as did all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but we should let you know that there are more than 200 school closings this morning because of that round of snow that really, I feel like it lasted all day. It lasted all day, and it accumulated wow. some places more than others, Brandon, prompting all of these school closings this morning. Yeah, and I think concerns in rural areas, of course, uh, some of our areas west and north of Detroit that saw a little more snow and then cold air quickly icing up some of those streets. So you get a bus full of kids on these snow-covered and icy rural roads, and, and that's probably the thought behind it. But other than that, here's a look. Single digit numbers. It's three in Pontiac, eight in Flint, nine Ann Arbor, nine at Metro. It's four degrees right now in Mount Clemens. Don't have a ton of uh, strong wind. That's nice. Mount Clemens, though, six below wind chill. Metro one below. So we need to layer the kids up at the bus stops and watch out for some icy spots. Single digits feeling zero or sub-zero with a little breeze. The breeze picks up midday and through the afternoon, 23 feeling Feeling even cooler than that with a couple of flakes and flurries of fly in throughout the day. We'll look at a snowmaker coming our way tonight coming up, but I want to get it to Kim and for live traffic and some of those icy streets. Are we seeing much trouble? Yes, Brandon, we actually are 
seeing some trouble out there. We've got a few accidents I want to let you know about, so we'll start uh, with this one over on US 23. This must be a really slick area because uh, we're seeing multiple accidents on this side of US 23 here. The southbound side of US 23 just past Silver Lake Road. Multiple ac accidents are reported there, so really take it easy in that area. I also want to take a look at another accident that could slow you down a, li a little bit. This is over on the eastbound side of I-94 right at Belleville Road, blocking your left shoulder. And then this one right here, uh, if I stepped aside here, you can see this is northbound I-75, that ramp to westbound I-96. We've got an accident there blocking your left shoulder, something to be mindful of there as well. I'll keep a close eye on all these accidents and bring you an update on what's going on coming up in my next report at 614. Back to you. All right, it can thank you to 602 and now we want to get to a story that's developing from Detroit's west side. Yeah, we're talking about an Uber driver that was ambushed by a gunman and now there's the hunt for a killer. Local force Coco McAvoy joining us live now this morning and Coco this happened while that Uber driver was picking up a passenger. That's right. Good morning, Evrod and Rhonda. And the details are very limited this morning, so police need your help tracking down who's responsible for this murder. This was the crime scene on Detroit's west side after a man was shot multiple times. The shooting happened here in the 15,000 block of Coyle Street at around 740 last night. When officers arrived to the area, they found a man dead with several gunshot wounds. A witness told police the man was an Uber driver and he was there to get her something to eat. Officers are still working on confirming a number of details in this case. Police looked inside of the man's car for clues about who killed him and are hoping to lock down a motive and a killer. And police don't have much information at this time about the suspect, but they know the suspect was driving a dark colored pickup truck. If you have any information about this murder, you're asked to call the Detroit Police Department. Reporting live this morning, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. Very troubling, Coco. Thank you. A man continues to recover this morning after a shooting right inside of a movie theater, the AMC Star Theater in Clinton Township. Investigators say that the shooting happened after some kind of dispute. One family heard a commotion and knew the right course of action. Take a look at this little girl. They're scared. He should, we're all trying to figure out what happened. And I grabbed his phone and called 911. Or did she say, uh, I wonder if the guy's all right. I hope I saved his life when I called 911. And as you know now, you see you did do a great thing and you helped. And that's awesome. <laughs> that's my baby. Mm. Pretty awesome little girl and a proud father. The alleged shooter remained at the scene and was taken into custody. Today, former Michigan State and USA Gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser will be back in an Eaton County courtroom where he is likely to be sentenced for the third and final time. So far, more than 250 women and girls have reported abuse to law enforcement. The hearing, which began last week, has included more than 60 victim impact statements, and you can watch the continuation of this hearing this morning on ClickOnDetroit.com. Meanwhile, there's big trouble brewing behind the scenes at MSU. Faculty there moving to take a vote of no confidence in the school's Board of Trustees. The motion is in response to the board's decision to hire former Governor John Engler as interim president. Faculty members say that the board rushed to appoint Engler and didn't take time to make sure that he's qualified. If the vote passes, faculty would call on the trustees to step down immediately. Time now is 605 on your Monday morning and well, they certainly have a reason to celebrate. <laughs> yes, they certainly do. We're talking about the Philadelphia Eagles fans after their Super Bowl win last night and some of the fans may have gotten a little out of hand. <laughs> How anybody thought that an awning could withstand the weight of all those people, I don't know, but the awning toppled over. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. And then, as you see here, fans caught on camera burning Patriot quarterback Tom Brady's jersey. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Jamie, the, the, joining us now, the story from Super Bowl 52 is how uh, the Eagles' backup quarterback quit, uh, outplayed, I should say, the soon-to-be Hall of Famer. Yes, absolutely. But Ooh. Tom Brady had a great game, too. I know, a record-breaking <laughs> game. Minus it's that crazy. one. The strip sack yeah. with Brandon Graham, who's yeah. a former Wolverine. And from one Detroit. One Michigan man to another Michigan man. Yeah. How about that? Okay, so Evrod, who would have thought this would have happened when Eagles starting QB Carson Wentz went down in Week 14? But Eagles head coach Doug Peterson believed in his backup Nick Foles, and that showed in the aggressive play calling last night. Nick Foles <laughs> responsible for four touchdowns, this one receiving 34 seconds to go. Trick play, lines up as a wing back. 
and he catches this from his tight end Trey Burton. It's 22-12 Eagles at halftime. Patriots come back. Tom Brady to Rob Gronkowski. Patriots take the one-point lead nine minutes to go, but Eagles stay aggressive. Foles firing to Zach Ertz for the score. The play was reviewed, but NFL says that's good. Eagles led 38-33 with two to go. Philly's defense coming up big. Brandon Graham swatting the ball out of Brady's hands. Eagles recover. Uh, that was the only turnover of the game. Eagles hold on to win 41-33. Today we had our opportunities. Um, Never really got control of the game. Never really played on our terms. And, uh, you know, just didn't make enough plays when we needed to. The big thing that helped me was knowing that I didn't have to be Superman. I have an amazing teammates, amazing coaches around me. And all I had to do was just go play as hard as I could and play for one another, play for those guys. Just go out there and play. Don't worry about it. And, uh, you know, came away with the victory. I've officially accomplished the best thing in this sport with a group of guys who mean the world to me. Wow. Uh, the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. First title in that city. And sure, they maybe got out of hand, but let them celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> and how about Brandon Graham? Because he has family here. He mm. was raised here in Detroit, went to Crockett High School. And for him to have that crucial yeah. play to stop what many people thought was Tom Brady going to go down this field and, and even this yeah. game out. Well, he came on SFE once, and he's a really nice person. Yeah. And he's doing charity work. So good for Brandon Graham. You Absolutely. like when good things happen to good people. Yes, and you do. Have you heard? Are they done celebrating in Philly, or is that still going on at 6.07? Well, 6 I went 07? to Delaware, and I have friends in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and they're not responding. So I think they're still <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> well, it's good to have you with us yeah. this morning to recap the game. It was a good one. Thanks. Yes. All right. Well, now let's send things over to Jason Carr, who was following a bit of controversy from the Super Bowl. Good morning. Yes, there's that as well. You're from Delaware? No, I went to the University of Delaware. Oh, you went to the University of Delaware. The, the goal is to make you laugh or cry or feel inspired, something like that. But one Super Bowl ads attempt to inspire isn't sitting well with everybody. The backlash coming up. But first, the business of Bitcoin. Rob Maloney explaining what the cryptocurrency is all about and whether it's a good investment for you. That's coming up next in Money Monday. No. Good Monday morning. Let's start out with one of the most controversial topics in the financial business these days, Bitcoin. What is it? Well, it's called virtual currency, cryptocurrency, but it's also a payment network, which can make it a little bit confusing. It was invented in 2009 by someone on the internet named Satoshi Nakamoto. That was an alias. And it gives you an understanding why when you realize that there's no government backing, and that was the charm. It was secrecy away from government oversight. Well, drug dealers and computer hackers started using it. Over time, and it's been quite a while now, it's been gaining some mainstream acceptance. You can earn bitcoins by online mining. You can also buy and sell them. And over time, futures trading took hold. Values skyrocketed, and then they dropped just as quickly. And we've seen that over the past month, which teaches us what bitcoin is not. It's not money, and it's not currency because there's no government backing and therefore no stability. So in the end, bitcoin is really just a very risky investment. If you want to play with small amounts of money in bitcoin, okay, fine. But you do not want to put large amounts of money into this and maybe even your life savings. Bad idea. But on our next Money Monday, we're going to talk about how human nature hasn't changed in about, oh, 500 years when it comes to bubbles. We'll see you then. A drunk drive. Welcome back, everybody. It's one of the best parts about the Super Bowl. We got a great game, a great halftime show, and the commercials. Yeah, there were a lot of good ones. And Jason joining us in studio now because Detroit had a pretty big presence there. Some familiar faces, some familiar brands. Yeah, where to begin? How about actor and Detroit native Keegan Michael Key scoring some laughs for Quicken Loans? Take a listen. What's the strong man? It's a pea protein gluten free pate. It's a burrito filled with plants pretending to be meat. Last night took an L, but did not a bounce back. What's an L? The rap singer took a loss, and now he's okay. Right. Key got some support from Big Sean, as you saw there. You can watch the full ad on clickondetroit.com. And one way to have a successful Super Bowl spot is to bring in Jeff Goldblum and, of course, a T-Rex. Chrysler, the Jeep commercial, which paid homage to the movie Jurassic Park. You gotta love it. 
Now, another Chrysler commercial is facing some backlash. The issue, it used a speech from Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to promote the Dodge Ram. Take a listen. Recognize wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. The reason people are upset, well, because they don't think MLK's words should be used to sell cars. What do you think about this? We want to share some of your thoughts. In the carport, Jan says, I think it was awesome. To that, Hap adds, shaking my head, only thing I saw wrong with it was they didn't show the truck enough. And finally, Ryan says, folks, relax. It should be inspiring. See, nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, an icon's words for an iconic truck, please stop the constant whining. What do you think? Sound off on social media. By the way, that speech was first delivered 50 years ago Sunday. Of course, it wasn't all commercials during the Super Bowl. There was also movie trailers too, but the one that's getting the most attention, take a listen. So you wanna make a difference? Yeah. Trust me, you're gonna love it. And which branch are you interested in joining? I'm going to be a pilot. Best in the galaxy. That was the first look at the new Star Wars movie, the one that's coming soon, Solo, as in Han Solo, getting his own solo movie, in theaters May 25th. Back to you. No word yet on if there's going to be a cameo from Brandon Rubaka. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should ask him. Yes, we should. Let's get over to Brandon because in addition to the Super Bowl, we got a lot of snow yesterday that still has an impact, at least for the schools. Yeah, absolutely. Some school closings on clickondetroit.com. Check that out. And it took me a little while to figure that movie out until I saw the Falcon and uh, uh, somebody from the Wookiee family that finally figured out that that's what was coming. All right, that, that was my troubleshooting. How you doing? Here's a look at yesterday's snow totals. Again, prompting some school closings. Peck up in Sanilac County, 6.2 inches. Wyandotte, down river, 5 inches. Romulus, our official number, 4.8 inches. Berkeley in southern Oakland County, 4.8 inches. And East Point, Macomb County, 3.8 inches. So we did get it that 3 to 6 inch range verified. As we look at uh, 9 degrees out outside your door right now with wind chills sub zero in most spots. But hey, we're not in Green Bay. We're not in Duluth. Well, we thank everybody all the time for that. But look at how much chillier it is up to our north and west. And we continue to draw in air from that direction. So we have several days now of some chilly stuff. 10 degrees out early this morning. A few peaks of sun throughout the day. A few flakes and flurries. Nothing really stacking up. 19 at noon. 23 the afternoon high on your Monday. Snow moving in tonight. Probably sometime after 7 or 8 p.m. There is a look at that snowmaker and again watch the timeline here through the afternoon we're good through the evening commute we should be good and 9 10 11 o'clock maybe until about 2 in the morning and a couple of inches possible out of this on the ground early tomorrow still chilly most of the day tomorrow another system comes late Tuesday early Wednesday and that could lay down another couple of inches early on Wednesday morning Speaking of snow, a fresh snow covered tiger right outside Comerica Park, our Josh Strand getting our 1 800 Hansen's weather window shot this morning. And, you know, not too far away from opening day, Kim. It's oh. just like a couple of days away. I. I wish. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a few problems I want to let you know about. Uh, we've got some accidents uh, to watch out for. This one's over on eastbound I-94 right at Belleville Road. Watch out there. The left shoulder is blocked. And then also this other accident over on northbound I-75, the ramp to westbound I-96 here. This is blocking your left shoulder. Uh, be careful here. Not causing any backups, though. And then let's get a live check of the roads with our 1-800-CALL Sam Trapper shot to show you what's going on here over on I-696 right at Mound. You can see that traffic volumes are starting to build, but no problems you need to worry about here. Over to you. 
All right, Kim, thank you. 618 is your time, and it's time to take a look at consumer headlines. Gas prices are going up here in Michigan, plus the battle over the technology used in self-driving cars begins. But first, a lot of investors hoping that the Dow bounces back today. Let's get to Aaron Aid live at NASDAQ with more. Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda. It's shaping up to be another rough day on Wall Street. Stock futures point to a lower open for the Dow. Strong wage growth last month triggered worries over inflation, and rising bond yields have slowed demand for stocks. As for Friday's trading, the Dow tumbled 665 points, or 2.5 percent. The trial between Uber and Wamu gets underway today. It's a battle over the technology used in self-driving cars, specifically the little eye that spins on the top of the car's roof. Wamu, which is owned by Google's parent company Alphabet, alleges Uber built the technology with trade secrets that it stole from them. Uber says it created the tech on its own. Gas prices are up in Michigan. The statewide average is about $2.67 a gallon, according to AAA Michigan, and that's a jump of about $0.04 cents a gallon over a week ago. Metro Detroit's average was also up about $0.04 cents to $2.62 a gallon. Rhonda? All right, Aaron, thank you. It is 6.20 now on your Monday morning. Are you suffering from the winter blues, especially after that round of snow we got yesterday? <laughs> we are helping you battle them all week long, in fact. Yes, coming up, Dr. McGeorge shows us the warning signs that those winter woes could be something more serious. Also, a major pileup in Missouri. Take a look at this. We've got the reason behind this traffic mess coming up. And time now to meet our Facebook friend for today. And this is Teresa Cuerras. She's from Macomb. Teresa, I'm not sure if I pronounced your last name right, so I apologize. But Teresa is a mother of a 12-year-old daughter who is the light of her life. And for being our Facebook friend for the day, you win a $25 gift card to Premier Pet Supplies. They have locations in Beverly Hills, Rochester Hills, Livonia and Novi. And if you at home would like to be our Facebook friend of the day, make sure you like the local War Facebook page, click on the friend of the day tab and upload a photo and tell us a little bit about you. We're back in a minute. Welcome back. Good Monday morning post Super Bowl and Man, we are super bummed. It's over. The weekend's over. It's nine degrees right now with a wind chill of one below. And so some icy spots out there for sure on the streets from Super Bowl Sunday snow. Upper teens at noon, breezy and low 20s for a high today. Snow coming tonight, and we'll talk more about that coming up. All right, thank you, Brandon. Well, it is slick out there, so just be careful no matter where you are headed. But I just want to let you know about this new accident we just picked up over on northbound I-75 right at Warren Avenue. Your right lane is blocked as well as both shoulders. All right, it is 625 now and investigators have zeroed in on a locked track switch as the cause of that deadly train crash in South Carolina. An Amtrak train traveling from New York to Miami slammed right into a parked CSX train near Columbia on Sunday. And sadly, the trash killed the engineer and the conductor and injured more than 100 people. Investigators are going to be back on the scene there today. Meanwhile, over in Missouri, some slick roads caused a multiple vehicle pileup on a highway that immediately shut it down. There you can see traffic backed up for miles. Officials at Missouri Highway Patrol say that the icy and slick roads are to blame for this and about 100 other accidents on Sunday. Mm. Some dangerous conditions out there. Absolutely. 625 is your time and next today. Local stories from West Bloomfield, Commerce Township and Farmington Hills. Plus, is it a done deal just yet? What we've learned overnight involving the future of the Detroit Lions and the search for a new head coach. Yes, and a half-baked effort. Wait until you hear what happened to a would-be thief who tried to target this bakery. We're back in a minute. Navigate your morning. Welcome back, everybody. It is 627, and as we continue to celebrate our local heroes, Benny Napoleon is an American police officer and politician who is the current sheriff of Wayne County. Yes, and also the former Detroit police chief, a 2013 candidate for the office of mayor of Detroit. Napoleon, very active and involved in the Detroit community for decades and a graduate from Cass Tech High School. A lot of other proud grads are proud of him. Proud to have him here in Detroit. We're back in a minute. Simmons Beauty, live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. Judgment Day again. Disgraced former gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser will learn his fate for the third time in court. 
Plus, three young boys still missing. And now, in a Local 4 exclusive, John Skelton from Behind Bars will tell you what brought him to tears and his one regret as he gives his first interview in years. And guys, we are tracking a few flakes along the shoreline there of Lake Michigan. Most of the Midwest is dry right now. And if you're looking for our next snow chance, we have to make like a New England place kicker. <laughs> Wide left. There it is. Wow. That was interesting that they too. Kept missing. Yeah, like an extra point. Both kickers missed an extra point. Their one job. Then a field goal. Yeah. I was a little surprised at that too. Absolutely. And we have our Jamie Edmonds here with us today to recap the Super Bowl and also look at a couple of coaches on mm -hmm. on both sidelines. One a past coach for us and the other perhaps the future. Yes, we're going to talk about that. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about the commercials and I feel like we need to talk about the halftime show as well. So we're going to break mixed reviews. I thought JT was awesome. I thought it was one of the best I've seen. In the meantime, let's get on over to meteorologist Brandon. Did you like it? JT Lake? I did. Yeah, we enjoyed it. Just sat there and you know, we were curious because he teased at some stuff and weren't sure when that was happening. Right, but right. I think the thing with Prince, they ran into some issues with the uh, what do they call it? A, a hologram or the thing? I so thought they, it was amazing. I no, thought it was no. good though. That part he, of it with Prince was pretty darn cool. It was cool. Uh, was it uh, I would die for you or I would die for you? Darling, if you. All right. <laughs> Not, <laughs> nine degrees out there right now. I did. I really enjoyed it. I thought, you know, him playing piano and, and singing and running around. He is a super talented guy. Uh, right now we're looking at wind chills of four below zero outside. So you want to layer up for sure. Temps, not really the story today because the wind chills are going to keep our temperatures mainly sub zero and single digits through the morning and upper single digits to teens through the day. Partly sunny, 23 the afternoon high with a few flakes and flurries, but we are tracking a weather maker that's coming our way later tonight. We're looking at uh, what could be one to three inches, but the start time probably after 7 p.m. And we'll take again a closer look at that snow and another one right behind it. That's coming up. Kim is right now standing by for live at traffic. Icy start. It is icy. And speaking of that, it was so icy over in Warren that they actually had to close the westbound side of 11 Mile because uh, they need to salt that area. It was too slippery for drivers. So keep that in mind. That's a temporary closure between Hoover and Van Dyke. Uh, so it is really slippery out there. You want to give yourself uh, some extra time no matter where you are headed. I want to let you know about this other accident too. Over on the eastbound side of I-94 right at Belleville Road, the left shoulder is blocked. And then we've been following this accident all morning morning. It's actually uh Oh, there it is. Uh, northbound I-75, that ramp to westbound I-96, that's blocking your left shoulder there, so be careful of that. And then we do have our 1-800 call Sam Trapper shot out and about right now. This is over northbound I-75 right at Warren Avenue. And as you can see there, we've got a lane block, so expect some slowdowns in that area too. Guys? All right, Kim, thank you. It is 632 now. He is never getting out of prison. We're talking about Larry Nasser today. However, he is going to get even more prison time piled on to his sentence. And this comes after the former gymnastics doctor faced dozens more sexual abuse victims in an Eaton County courtroom outside of Lansing last week. Local 4's Coco McAvoy picks up the story for us live from here. And Coco, are the victim impact statements complete? Good morning, Rhonda and Everett. Yes, all of the victims have spoken. So the next step now, of course, is the prosecutor, the defense attorney, and possibly Larry Nasser himself to speak today. And we expect that to take place this morning. Larry Nasser could be sentenced today for his crimes against young gymnasts in Eden County. It's the second round of sentencing for Nasser, who has watched dozens of victims come forward to share their stories of sexual abuse. Last Friday, one father, Randy Margraves, did what a lot of parents wanted to do when they heard about the trauma their daughters suffered. Later that day, he said his emotions got the best of him. I'm embarrassed. I didn't, I'm not here to upstage my daughters. The judge decided Margraves wouldn't face any charges. I delivered unintentionally my three daughters to a demon who had his own twisted and sick agenda for his own demented 
desires. Now I have to live with the fact that I failed to protect my daughters. While Nasser's case could wrap up this afternoon, more action will be taken in Washington, D.C. following this pivotal and disturbing case. And Larry Nasser's sentencing will pick up this morning. Of course, we will end up having full coverage on air and online at clickondetroit.com. Reporting live this morning, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. Coco, thank you. That sentencing hearing set to get underway at 830 this morning, and we will be live streaming it on clickondetroit.com. You can also see the timeline leading up to today. In this case, we have a special section on the trial on our website as well. And we do want to get you to some other stories that are making headlines here on your Monday morning all across the metro Detroit area. We're going to take a look at Westland as well as West Bloomfield and Farmington Hills. But we do start in Commerce Township because that is where uh, thieves plan to rob a store took an unexpected turn and he was caught under one minute, 30 seconds to be exact. It happened Sunday at Melligan Bakery, the one on Union Lake Road. The man failed to get anything from the cash register and turned, tried to run away, but an off-duty Oakland County Sheriff's deputy was standing right outside the door and arrested that would-be robber. Over in Westland, a woman miraculously walks away without a scratch. Her car, not so much. Her car was hit by a train on Sunday. Investigators are telling Local 4 that the woman's car got stuck on the tracks and all of the snow near the intersection of Cherry Hill and Newburgh. The woman was able to get out of her vehicle before that train hit her car and she was not injured. And nearly 2000 DTE Energy customers are were left in the dark this morning after a widespread power outage in Oakland County on Sunday. Originally, at least 15,000 customers were affected by the outage, but most of those homes and businesses are back in working order right now. There's no word on an estimated restoration time for the remaining 2,000 people. Big night in Minnesota, Minneapolis to be exact. Philadelphia is still flying high this morning after the Eagles. They pulled it off, capturing their first Super Bowl win in the team's history. Yeah, big congratulations to them. And on top of that, they toppled a Goliath, beating the reigning Super Bowl champions, the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. Eagles backup quarterback Nick Foles was named MVP, and some would say rightfully so. He tossed three touchdowns and caught another. And aside from losing the Super Bowl. The Patriots are also losing key coaches. Yes, and one looks like he's destined for Detroit, although it has not been made official yet. We have been talking about this <laughs> for so long. It's finally time. Yes. Yeah, he, we're talking about Matt Patricia. Now that the Patriots season is over, the time has come. ESPN's Adam Schefter says it will be announced. He will be the Lions new head coach midweek. Patricia comes here after spending six seasons with the Patriots as defensive coordinator. He won if two anything, Super Bowls in that time, would have liked three, but last night his defense did not bode well. Nick Foles threw three touchdowns, caught a fourth. Eagles had 538 yards of offense in the win. When asked about the Lions' job after the game, Patricia told the quarter, right now it's about the game and Philly and my disappointment in the outcome of the game tonight. And how about on the other side? Jim Schwartz for the Eagles. He's their defensive coordinator. Well, he's a Super Bowl champion now as well. His defense didn't stop the Patriots much at all either. Brady threw for a playoff record 505 yards and three touchdowns, but Brandon Graham strip sack. That turnover late sealed the deal. Schwartz went to the Super Bowl once before with the Titans, but this is his first win. I'm not really sure how Lions fans feel about that, but he is a Super Bowl champion. He, mm -hmm. I always liked Schwartz. I, he was fiery. Yeah, he was. <laughs> the interesting that. thing is it wasn't the best night for either defensive coordinator. No. It was all about offense. I know. The defenses didn't do much of anything. <laughs> no. Good game overall, though. It was very, a good game to watch. watch. A lot very of offense exciting. is fun. When there's yeah. low scores, it's not as exciting. And it's exciting for Detroit. It is. Matt Patricia, Super Bowl champion. Absolutely. Take us to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So it could be us next year. Oh, well, I don't sure. see why not. Yeah, All right. If Philadelphia can do it, why can't why we? Why can't we? We've yes. got to like break it. the streak sometime. <laughs> Jamie, thanks for being in with us. Yes, sure. and of course, besides the game and the commercials that were fun to watch, millions tuned in to watch Justin Timberlake and this big moment, this big performance that they were billing it as, and it was rightfully so. It turned out pretty well, in my opinion. Let's get up. Good morning to you. Many took to social media immediately after JT's performance to give their review. Here is a clip. Take a listen. Somebody 
Supporters said Timberlake's performance was the best they've heard in quite some, some time as he sang a wide range of his hits and at one point paid tribute to Prince. Meanwhile, critics say he never really hit a groove, he had audio problems, and yeah, it was just a big epic fail. From our Facebook page, you said the following. Let's take a look. Cheryl, awesome, he totally nailed it, excellent entertainer. Rhee said, where was Janet, LOL. I think we were wondering that too. Mike, the audio sucked, either that or he was having a hard time singing and dancing at the same time. And Crystal, I loved it and I truly love the Prince tribute. What do you think? Sound off on social media. What'd you guys think? I, I'm sorry, about, I don't know, two or three minutes into it, I said, where's Bruno Mars on Twitter? What? What? Yeah. Why? You weren't feeling it? I wasn't feeling it. I, was, I, I needed some. In the beginning, did it get better for you midway or towards the end? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we have a hater in aisle three right over here. Hey. My Facebook feed, though, I, I found mixed reviews, too, and really? I was surprised. But I was on a plane watching it. So I thought, you know, I'm on this little tiny screen, but I thought it was good. But, I, you know, people who were watching at home on, like, their big screens, I did wonder, you know, what, what the performance was like. But There's no way to make you feel old, though, when you realize that there are 13-year-olds out there who, like, how do you know all these songs? Who is this Justin Timberlake guy? <laughs> oh, come on. Like my nephews have Seriously. no idea. Really? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Very, very alarming. All right, guys, we're back in a minute. Are you suffering from the winter blues? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'll show you the warning signs that your winter woes could be something more serious. But first, face to face, our Sandra Ali sits down with the father of the Skelton brothers, the man blamed for the disappearance of his boys, whose whereabouts are still unknown. Sky Four. Welcome back, everybody. It is a story that captivated our area here in Metro Detroit, Michigan, and the nation. The disappearance of three brothers who vanished while in their father's care. And now, for the very first time in six years, John Skelton, the man many are pointing the finger at, is talking only to our Sandra Ali. This is a story we have been working on for many months while taking a closer look at the Morency case. We reached out to John Skelton in prison to see if he was ready for a face to face interview. Then just last week, we sat down with him and talked for more than two hours. Keep in mind, since he's in a state prison, there aren't any cameras or recorders allowed inside. And in this case, we couldn't even bring in a notebook or a pen. I walked in the room. We made eye contact. He shook my hand and he started sobbing, which caught me off guard. John apologized for crying. He said he was so emotional because he couldn't believe he was having contact with a visitor. I was the first person to visit him here. I was sitting in the chair next to him. I didn't realize we would be in such close proximity. We were side by side the entire time. I asked him about the boys right off the bat. In tears, he said, I miss their voices. On their last night together, which John remembers as being the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, John says he made the boys their favorite meal, fried chicken and a cake to celebrate Andrew's birthday. John says he had already made arrangements with a group he calls the Underground Sanctuary to give the boys away. And on Thanksgiving night at 10, John says he watched as two women and a man who looked like he was in his 60s pulled up to the house in their light colored van to take Andrew, Alexander and Tanner away. John says he told the boys they were going to have a better life with a new family, a family who lived on an Amish farm in Ohio right along the Indiana border. He promised them their new family would buy them the farm boots they'd been asking for and let them ride on a tractor whenever they wanted. Breaking down in tears for the fourth time during our interview, John said he regrets giving his boys away. We hope you'll join us tonight at 10 p.m. for our Black Friday, the Missing Skelton Brothers special. You'll hear much more from John, his family in Jacksonville, and of course, the boy's mother, Tanya. I'm Sandra Ali. Back to you. And we have also launched a brand new podcast. It's called Shattered Black Friday. This is a project that we've really been working on for the past two months, uh, for months in fact. And the first two episodes are ready for you to download right now. All you have to do is search for Shattered Black Friday wherever you get your podcasts from. Meanwhile, we have a school alert for you mm -hmm. this morning. Hundreds of schools closed because of yesterday's snow. 
The question is, what's in store for us now in the weather department, Brandon? Oh, I thought you were going to the, I, I'm just updating my snow totals map from yesterday. Give me a second here. I'm so sorry. Well, there it comes. Uh, we have, yeah, the school closings on clickondetroit.com. A lot of this probably because of how quickly it cooled off after the snow. So a lot of icy spots, rural roads, probably very, very slick. You get a school bus full uh, of kids on these icy roads, and a lot of our rural communities don't like to mess around with that. And from Super Bowl Sunday snow, from our uh, weather observer Steve over in the Farmington, Farmington Hills area, about three inches, Clarkston 4.1, Ann Arbor 4.6, Lake Orion five inches and up near Flint 6.3 inches. So the storm did verify it came in a few funky phases though, real heavy stuff through the late afternoon, early evening on Super Bowl Sunday that made stuff real tricky to get around. And now the cool air is upon us. We have nine degrees at Metro with a wind chill of four below. We have three in Pontiac, not much of of a wind in all of our four zones. The winds will be picking up through the late morning and afternoon. 5 to 15 out of the west primarily gusting over 20 and so wind chills are sub zero at times this morning and then low teens at times this afternoon even though our high of 23 degrees will feel that breeze all day and this evening we have more snow coming in probably around 8 or 9 p.m. so after the evening drive and a couple of inches possible as we head through the overnight hours again right now just a few flakes and flurries to our west coming in that's about it and this system later tonight through the early overnight dropping one to three inches or through the area again early Tuesday. Most of tomorrow is dry, still cool middle 20s, maybe upper 20s and then Wednesday morning another system comes in with a couple of inch potential on Wednesday morning that commute. I guess both tomorrow and Wednesday morning, Kim, will be slippery. All right. Well, we will be prepared. Thank you, Brandon. We've got a couple of accidents to let you know about before you head out the door. It is slippery out there. Give yourself extra time no matter where you're headed. All right. Eastbound I-96, just past Kent Lake Road. Your right shoulder is blocked here. Another accident over on northbound I-275, right at 7 Mile, blocking your left shoulder. This one over on eastbound I-94, causing some delays right at Belleville Road. Your left shoulder is blocked. And then all over to this accident um, on northbound I-75 right at Warren Avenue. Your right lane is blocking is blocked there as well as both shoulders. So expect some slowdowns in that area as well. And then we do want to show you another accident with our 1-800 call Sam Trapper shot. You are looking at northbound I-75 that ramp to westbound I-96. As you can see there, that is blocking the right shoulder. Be careful while traveling this way. Over to you. All right, Kim, thank you. So does the cold and the gray and gloomy weather have you feeling down? If so, you're not alone. Yeah, you might be surprised by the number of people impacted by the winter blues, whether it's a family member, maybe even a co-worker. Uh, you likely know a handful of people dealing with this whole seasonal slump, especially when it comes to being here in Detroit, because our city ranks number two, number two, where people say that the winter weather has a negative impact on their mood, particularly at work. That is according to a new survey and overall 38% of professionals give winter a big thumbs down. So all this week we're helping you battle the winter blues in all different kinds of ways. We are and to kick things off. We have Dr. Frank McGeorge here to really help us understand the winter blues, mm -hmm. what it really is and how to know if your symptoms could actually be the sign of something more serious. The winter blues refer to that down feeling most of us get in the winter months when the dark days and cold temperatures leave you longing for spring and sunshine. But experts say up to 20% of Americans are suffering from a more serious condition called seasonal affective disorder or SAD. There's a subset of population that when the light is diminished, uh, those chemical changes will take effect and we get depressed. Dr. Ron Samarian is the chief of psychiatry at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak. He says seasonal affective disorder is a subset of depression that's linked to a particular time of year, generally winter. It's like a hibernation with a bad mood attached to it. Uh, so there's a tendency to oversleep, overeat, uh, have very little energy, very little motivation, and uh, report a feeling of depressed mood. Some people may also feel hopeless or even have suicidal thoughts. If your symptoms are affecting your ability to work or function at home or at school, that's a sign you need help. As any other major depression, there are 
uh, approaches to it that can help those syndromes. Antidepressants, the standard antidepressants, um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, talking therapy. Dr. Samarian says using a light therapy box for 30 to 60 minutes a day can also be helpful. If the mood is severe enough, the approach with antidepressants plus the light therapy can definitely help the majority of people in that syndrome. And if you can push yourself to get outdoors or exercise more often, it's worth it. It's really terrific to get out, expose yourself to a little more sunlight. Uh, exercise is always good for almost everything, so definitely. But it's important to recognize the difference between the winter blues and more serious symptoms. It's a spectrum disorder because some of us get a little bit frustrated with winter and some of us get severely depressed. And we want to make sure that there's a difference and an understanding that when you're in a severe depression, you need a little more than just uh, getting out to exercise. Now, as Dr. Samarian said, there are very effective treatments available, so talk to your doctor about your symptoms. Do not suffer in silence. Now, if it is the less serious winter blues you're battling, there are lots of things you can do to boost your mood, and we'll talk about several of the best ways the rest of the week. Back to you. Yes, we will, including helping others. That's mm -hmm. a great way to feel good and help someone else feel good as well giving back so tomorrow at 6 a.m we'll show you some really awesome opportunities around town that will help you be able to give back to others in need and feel good at the same time we're back in a moment it's super Disgraced former MSU Dr. Larry Nasser is back in an Eaton County courtroom today. He is expected to receive his third sentencing, facing dozens of charges of sexual abuse. We'll be live streaming the proceedings that get underway at 8.30 this morning at ClickOnDetroit.com and the Click on Detroit mobile app. And the hunt is on for a gunman responsible for shooting and killing an Uber driver last night on Detroit's west side. Charges may be handed down today to the gunman who shot a man in the chest at the AMC Theater in Clinton Township on Sunday. Nine degrees, sub-zero wind chill out there, and some slick streets Kim has been telling us about all morning. May get a couple of flakes and flurries, but really the big story today, cold wind chills, chilly in this evening, a couple of inches of snow after 7 or 8 p.m. Here we go again. <laughs> More snow. <sighs> no accidents? Uh, we've got a couple of accidents out there, so just make sure you drive safely, everyone. All right. Great Have day. a great day, everybody.